actually driving the, uh, the car start to finish and getting it to 12 miles away two minutes later and to do the middle measured mile in a thousand miles an hour, three and a half seconds for that middle measured mile is going to be a huge challenge. First of all, from brakes off, very gently feeding in the EJ200, the, the Eurofighter jet engine, the world's best military jet engine. We're incredibly lucky to have an old engine on loan from the government, military recycling at its best. As we feed that in, up about 100 miles an hour, um, the intake is now taking enough air to develop full power. So immediately go to full reheat, we're now getting um, up to 9 tonnes of thrust from that engine. Car weighs less than 9 tonnes, so it's accelerating 1G now. That's 20 miles an hour per second. Accelerating up to 250, 300 miles an hour, checking everything's OK, feeding in the trigger on the uh, steering wheel. I've got my right foot fully down for the jet engine, 60,000 thrust horsepower equivalent under my right foot, another 70,000 under my right finger as I squeeze the trigger to fire the hybrid rocket system. The trigger actually fires up the Jaguar V8 engine which controls the rocket pump, which in turn pumps the fluid into the rocket to generate another 70,000 thrust horsepower equivalent. We are now accelerating at twice the force of gravity, 40 miles an hour per second, from 350 miles an hour to 1,000 in 20 seconds. That middle measured mile, and, and while I'm doing that, I'm also fighting against the directional stability. Solid metal wheels spinning up to 10,000 revolutions a minute will experience 50,000 radial G. No rubber tyres, they are solid metal. They are skating on the desert like I'm driving on ice. So I'll be fighting the steering to keep the car straight all the way up. As the car becomes supersonic, now the aerodynamics start to grip and the, the wheels start to generate their own shock waves. Now the car becomes super sensitive. So from driving on ice, I'm now making tiny steering corrections and the car is very, very precise and very controllable. Get to the end of the measured mile, I've now got five and a half miles to stop a thousand mile an hour car weighing seven tonnes. Chop the throttles, 17 tonnes of drag immediately produces a 3G deceleration. That's 60 miles an hour per second. Picture driving at 60 miles an hour, don't try this. Picture driving at 60 miles an hour and stop in one second, that's 3G. It's a violent, uncomfortable experience. For the first two or three seconds, we'll shed a lot of speed. As the speed comes down to 800 miles an hour, then punch the button on the steering wheel to crack the air brakes. Or if we're using uh, the, the parachutes instead, then the button to the left of that is the air brakes. Two metre parachute comes out, gives me an extra nine tonnes of drag, spikes it back up to 3G, and again we're losing 60 miles an hour per second. Very violent, uncomfortable experience in the cockpit to add to the noise, the heat and the vibration, and still I'm controlling the car and making sure that we're in the right place to get down through 400, 350, 300 miles an hour, down towards 200 miles an hour, the last mile or so of the track, then feeding my left foot onto the brakes. We've got disc brakes at the front to actually get rid of the last 200 miles an hour of speed, roll the car to a stop next to the turnaround crew because we now have less than one hour to get the car turned round and do the equivalent of a racing uh, pit stop on something as complex as the space shuttle because we've got to do this twice within one hour to get a land speed record. All of that is going to be live video and live data streaming onto the internet so we will have the largest global audience in history riding on board with me to find out how that engineering works.